morning. Um, as a personal uh, comment, I thank you deeply, seriously, seriously, for coming today. Vulcan was a very important battle. It is not commemorated in the United Kingdom, as well as it might, but we have started uh, 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 something rolling here. Why are we here? We're here to mark the Battle of Vulcan. The liberation of Vulcan in November 1944 was one of the most important events of the war in Northwest Europe. Launched head on against the most strongly defended coastline in the world, it was an epic of military professionalism and raw courage. The breakout from Normandy by the Allies in early August brought with it a serious logistics problem. With no working port between Cherbourg and Ostend, motorized supply lines stretched over 300 miles from the beaches of Normandy. The Allies had captured Antwerp on the 4th of September, but they were frustrated in using the port because it lay deep inside the Scheldt estuary, the mouth of which was held by the German, was, was the, the mouth of which was the German held island of Volkren. The objective of in fact, Operation Infatuate was to capture the island and to suppress its six large coastal batteries. The attack was two pronged, uh, an assault upon the breach to the sea defences by four Special Service Brigade of West Capel, and the capture of Vissingham by uh, five two Lowland Division led ashore by four Army commanders. With the heavily protected beaches off of West Capel and the routes to target set on narrow coastal sand dunes, the capture of the batteries threatened to be slow and costly. The batteries themselves were large complexes of nine and six inch guns encased in concrete bunkers surrounded by minefields, barbed wire, anti-tank defences with infantry in support. Operation Infatuate would be no picnic for four special service brigades. The campaign began early in October with the RAF blasting four large breaches on the island sea defences which flooded the hinterland and prevented the free movement of German troops. The assault upon the West Capel breach on the 1st of November opened with the Royal Navy Bombardment Squadron shelling the German batteries closest to uh, West Capel and the support squadron engaging targets either side of the breach. The commandos came ashore in their newly acquired amphibians, buffaloes and weasels, which had been launched offshore from LCTs. The support squadron was manned by sailors and marines. It comprised LCTs decked over to provide firing platforms for a mixture of large and medium guns and rocket launchers. It was known that engaging the beach targets, the squadron would draw fire upon itself, but in doing so it would distract enemy gunners as the commanders approached and landed on shore. The tactic was successful, but the cost was enormous. 17 of the squadron's 25 craft were lost or damaged, 172 crewmen were killed and another 125 wounded. The assault went in with four one and ten inter-allied commandos attacking the northern edge of the breach and four eight the southern. The landings <coughs> were fiercely opposed with heavy losses in LCTs, LCAs, amphibians, men and material, including the tanks of the armoured assault troops. Four seven held off ashore as brigade reserve. Eventually four one and four eight secured their bridgeheads and over the course of the next six days, with commando attacks supported by artillery and fighter bombers, the brigade would capture five of the six large coastal batteries, plus a number of anti-aircraft batteries. On D-Day itself, 4, 1 and 10 seized coastal batteries 15 and 17, and 4, 8 took uh, W-13. On D plus 2, 4, 7 having come ashore, passing through 4, 8, captured coastal battery W-8 and two small anti-aircraft batteries. On D plus 4, 4, 1 and 10, captured another anti-aircraft battery. On the plus 7, 4-1 and 4 Army Commander took the surrender of Koto Battery W-19. Thus, the capture of all five <coughs> batteries was completed by the morning of D plus 7. Sadly, the dying did not end there. For that very afternoon, a buffalo struck a huge mine, killing 20 men, 15 of them Marines from Forest Commander. The success of the capture of Vulcan was timely and important to the development of the war. 
Three weeks after the uh, Marines left Falkland, Hitler had launched his Ardennes campaign. If the Allies had not had Zeebrugge as a point uh, port for them to receive supplies, it may well have had a serious impact on the development of the war thereafter. The human cost of operation infatuated to the Royal Navy and the Royal Marines was predictably high. The Royal Navy suffered 353 casualties, including 185 killed, mainly from the support squad. Four Special Service Brigade suffered 95 killed and 283 wounded. To those men and to those who fought alongside them, we dedicate this act to be Thank you. May I just say how uh, <coughs> pleased I am to have been asked to, uh, to lead this service today. Uh, I hope it will be the first of, of many and that it will become an annual thing. Thank you, uh, Bob, for what you've just uh, told us. Tom, sorry. Um, I wanted to say myself that it took eight days to get ashore and, and clear the opposition. 8,000 troops surrendered, but there were an awful lot of our own troops who became casualties, and those are the people we remember today. Parade! Parade! Tun! They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Eternal God, Lord of the nations, whose love is without limit and without end, enlarge our vision of your redeeming purpose for the world. Help us to cooperate with you in fulfilling your design to bring all people into your family through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our nation, our Queen and our Royal Family, for our government and all in authority. We ask you, Lord, to give them wisdom that leads only to peace. We pray for our armed forces at sea, on land and in the air, as they seek to maintain peace in the world. And especially we remember today all who gave their lives in Operation Welcheren Infatuate. The men of 4147 and 48 Commando and all those in the combined operations. Almighty and eternal God from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted even by death. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for those we remember today. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer for the Royal Marines. O eternal Lord God, who through many generations has united and inspired the members of our Corps. Grant your blessing, we beseech you, on Royal Marines serving all round the globe. Bestow your crown of righteousness upon all our efforts and endeavors, and may our laurels be those of gallantry and honor, loyalty and courage. We ask these things in the name of him whose courage never failed, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer which our Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love, this day and always. Amen. Right up!